Well, hello and welcome to the DC Today. Back at it here on Monday and uh, coming to you live from New York City. It was a pretty boring day in markets. The uh, futures last night, I think, were down 50 when they first opened, when I first looked. I did see them down over 100 at one point. And then very early this morning, they were flat. The market opened down a little bit. Ended up going higher uh, a couple hours after the opening and just sort of stayed between you know, the flat mark and up about 100 and closed, you know, right in between there, up 50, 54 points, something like that. So uh, the Dow was up on the day, uh, but not by a lot, about 16 a whopping basis points as a percentage. The S&P was down a whopping eight basis points as a percentage. And then the NASDAQ was down um, a quarter of a point, although it had been it had been worse, kind of came back a little bit. But like I said, pretty boring day. In the markets, the uh, energy sector was the top performer. It was up uh, 71 basis points. Utilities were down over 1%. They were the worst performing. But um, you have a boring day in the bond market. It usually means a boring day in the stock market. And the bond yields uh, came in up 1%, oh, excuse me, one basis point, one one hundredth of a percent. Uh, the, the tenure moved higher. So where did it close at? 4.64% on the tenure. Uh, it had been up six or seven basis points earlier this morning, so came down from there the yield, which of course, when the yields drop, the prices are higher. When yields are higher, prices are lower. That's the way it works. Real quick, on the big seven, these major seven companies, largely big tech, that have driven the market's return on the year, to be very precise, it's 92% uh, of the upside of the market on the year. Um, those big seven, Seven out of 500 is 1.4% of the companies in the index. They make up 28% of the index right now. And you um, could say, okay, well, 28 seems way too high, which it, I think it is, very unhealthy. 1.4, though, would certainly be way too low, even though it, that's what they are as a matter of all 500 companies being equally weighted. Why would you ever equally weight with, if you're looking at uh, value of an index, which is itself the sum of parts of earnings? And those big seven represent 17% of the earnings of the S&P 500. So there's still quite a large disconnect between the market cap, 28%, and the earnings representation, 17%. Put it into context, the entire financial sector in the S&P is only 13% of the index. So less than half of those big seven are is the entire financial sector, but that makes up 21% of the market's earnings. So do with that what you will. Our, our intent is not to say, therefore it means that tomorrow uh, certain things are undervalued or tomorrow certain things are overvalued. It's to say that there's a top heaviness in index investing that has to be understood. In terms of around the world, um, President Biden's meeting with President Xi of China coming this Wednesday in San Francisco, I think is certainly the largest global news story. It, it appears all the details are wrapped up for that expected rendezvous between uh, Xi and Biden. Um, the, a couple smaller things that I'll share in the news cycle. Uh, Senator Tim Scott of the great state of South Carolina did uh, back out of the presidential race. He had been bidding for the Republican primary uh, spot for several months. He backed out last night. And then uh, for our friends across the pond, David Cameron, who was the prime minister of, of UK for some time, he is back at, at the game, but not in the prime minister spot, but the new foreign secretary in the UK, a pretty surprise return to government. Um, speaking of public policy here in the United States, uh, my sources say, I trust my sources, uh, but that doesn't mean it's rock solid because it, they don't claim to be rock solid. But as far as where their finger in the wind is, uh, that uh, Speaker Johnson's short-term government funding uh, plan will likely avert a government shutdown, but there are still a lot of unknowns around other spending priorities, primarily how to get the support for Israel, 
how to get uh, potentially a Ukraine package passed, which is a big priority of the White House. Um, not a lot of clarity on how those things are going to shake out. Um, five months ago, we were told the government uh, shutdown was going to happen. It didn't. I expected it would then. In this case, I think it's like around 50-50. Um, one macro analyst I follow believes the odds have gone over 50, but not by much that it will. But then I'm talking to other sources on the Hill that don't think it will happen. So uh, that's back out there. We'll have to hear more about it in the days ahead. The University of Michigan Consumer Confidence Index came in at 60.4 in November. It was 63.7 that had been expected. And so, look, um, the consumer confidence reading was not as good as people thought. And if you want to read the signs from the University of Michigan report, the consumer is struggling. But if you want to look at the spending and the actual data, it doesn't seem to be showing up there. Uh, anyone who's been reading me or listening to me knows that this is a very long-term view I've had about the worthlessness of the consumer confidence uh, reading. Um, so take that as a sign. 24% um, of respondents uh, say that they are going to take a vacation to a foreign country or have some travel planned to a foreign country in the next six months. That's an all-time high. So that doesn't seem like a consumer getting ready to tighten the belt there, traveling all over the world. Um, I, there's a chart at the dctoday.com that I think tells the entire story right now uh, in the housing market as it pertains not to the cost of capital but to the supply side. That there was a surge of excess inventory after the financial crisis because of the amount of foreclosures of people that could not, would not, did not pay for their homes resulted in an awful lot of liquidation to settle the market, to clear the market and bring supply and demand back into equilibrium. And now we face the exact polar opposite issue where um, you have nowhere near enough inventory to establish a price level at which uh, the, the market can be cleared. And so the chart it refers to the existing home inventory. I think it's fascinating. Um, speaking of cost of capital, the Fed, Chairman Powell, I thought, sounded pretty straightforward at the October FOMC meeting and then the press conference. But um, last week, it seemed like there were attempts to kind of re-jawbone a little hawkishness. Uh, I, I remain skeptical um, uh, that they really will raise rates again. Now, 16% of our imports, um, let's see, 16% of our imports, 2020. So you're talking about a little over three years ago, um, excuse me, it's, uh, yeah, 2021. The number's down to 12% now. So post-COVID, our imports from China have dropped from 16% of our total imports to 12%. Why am I bringing this up when I was just talking about the Fed? Because I think it speaks to a drop of dollars that are available for the Chinese to put into treasuries. It has a big impact on rates because the more we are importing from China, the more we are paying them in dollars, unless, of course, we were selling them as much as we're buying from them, but that has not been the case. And then those excess dollars get turned around and repatriated into treasuries. And I think that the decline in our imports from China is a big part of why long rates have gone higher. I've talked about this before. I'm just putting some more empirical data to support it on the table. Uh, speaking of where rates may or may not be going, Morgan Stanley came out with a call this morning that the Fed will begin cutting rates in June of next year. Uh, Goldman Sachs is not is saying it will not be till later, um, but Goldman, excuse me, Morgan is calling for a Fed funds rate of 2.37 percent by the end of 2025. So two years from now, basically that rate being cut about you know 60 um, uh, percent uh, from where it is at the at the moment. Be, take that however you wish. All right, against doomsdayism in the dctoday.com and ask David about what I believe 
about doomsdayers and those who make their living with a sort of doomsday ideology. I really encourage you to check it out. I won't go through the whole long answer here, but it was one of my uh, favorite Ask Davids to engage with in quite some time. So the CPI number comes out tomorrow, Tuesday. The PPI number comes out Wednesday. President Biden meets with President Xi of China in San Francisco on Wednesday. So we could have some interesting things happening in the markets, in the news over the next couple of days. In the meantime, I'll leave it there. Thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. And uh, of course, thanks for reading the DC Today. And please do reach out with questions anytime. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.